Hi and welcome. Today I'm sharing an art journal spread in that old book that I have already used uh, in some of my past videos. And I'm trying out some new watercolors that I got sent from Supervision. And I will make a dedicated video for these paints um, where I swatch them, them and give you uh, some close-up views on how the paints are working. I really like them and I wanted to see how they will work on that gessoed page. Watercolor on gesso is um, a complete different look than watercolor usually has and I've used it in one of my past videos and really like the texture I got and I wanted to try that out with these um, paints. They are granulating and a little bit shimmery. They have some very interesting textures. I'm playing intuitively here, just applying some of the paints that I think will fit together. And I try to make a high contrast by adding a darker values and I also keep some white space. I wanted to add in some orange, um, but there is no such color in this set. And then I decided I can use the brush or powders. I haven't used them for a long time and I really like the texture they create. And here I'm using the gamboche color and I will also use, I think, a gray and the alizarin crimson. I'm adding a little bit more water to make the pigments bleed. What I really like is that you get a pretty grungy and messy look with this technique. And that, I feel, is a really nice um, style for an original page. I want to do some scribbles with a watercolor pencil and I'm using this Magnus from Faber-Castell. I felt something was missing on my page and I decided to pick out the alizarin crimson from the brushes and add a little bit of them to this corner.
I let everything dry and to increase the texture after it was dry I, had, I added some splatters with just water and then I soaked that up with a kitchen roll and that gave me some really nice texture. I let that dry again and now I'm going in with some white gesso over the white areas or the lighter areas of my page to bring back the white space a little bit. The brushes will of course bleed into the gesso but not too much. I now go in with that pencil again to make more art marks on my page. I also wanted to make some white dots and I'm using a Uniposca marker. I don't know, sometimes I feel that the Posca paint pens, especially the white ones, are super watery, although I shake them. Um, sometimes they are better and sometimes I feel they are worse. Uh, I don't know, what experience do you have with those? Posca white markers and do you have a recommendation for one that works a little bit better or is more opaque? I want to bring in that tempera stick. I recently bought myself a set on Amazon because I wanted to try them out in my sketchbook and I really like them but I feel they are drying too fast. They are not comparable to the Faber-Castell gelatos because the gelatos never dry completely and these tempera sticks are really paint sticks so you apply them and about 90 seconds later they are completely dry and that gives you not so much time to play with those sticks especially when I'm in my sketchbook I would like to make some colorful blended backgrounds and that's really hard as they don't really blend uh, because they are drying so fast. With the gelatos you get wonderful backgrounds in the sketchbook especially in one with a smoother paper um, watercolor paper does not work really well uh, when you use them dry. I would recommend something uh, that is smooth. I am using the Royal Talent sketchbook, but then you can go over the gelatos really good with other mediums. I love to work with colored pencils and that's a bit difficult 
um, you have to apply the gelatos pretty thin and then add a layer of fixative and then you can work over them. I'm covering up this torn um, edge with this piece of tissue. I have added some marks with uh, waterproof ink on that. It's laying around for a while and I thought I would just adhere it to this page and I feel that looks pretty nice. The temper sticks, by the way, are from Shuttle Art. Um, I think there are many different brands out there and I expect them to be all the same kind of quality. They are made for kids, so it's not um, <laughs> a high quality product, I think. But I think for an art journal or sketchbook, it's okay because it's nothing um, that has to last a hundred years. The stamp I'm using here is from the Mixed Media Marks Clear set. It's not on the rubber set. I want to add a little bit more of stamping with pink so it matches the magenta that I have on the background. I'm happy with the page and here I'm stamping the title I want to use. It's The stamps are all from the same set and this is just a piece of scrap paper that was laying around. I will cut out the words and then arrange them to my spread. While I was arranging them, I uh, saw this paper laying next to me and I thought maybe I should add just a little bit of collage to make that pop and I feel that looks pretty good. I'm searching for another piece of paper, something turquoise that matches the spots of turquoise I have on the page and then I will just adhere this to um, the corner, not to the corner, to the right side of my page. I wanted to stamp the stitching border, um, but I didn't think of that. My stamp is pretty sticky and the ink I'm using is stays on and stays on with sticky stamp on a super dry or thin paper like the ones I've been using here. 
does not work pretty good. I should have been using um, the the rest of Claire. That's better. Um, yes, it's not a drama. I will just stamp that stitching border again over the papers. And then it looks a bit better. And now I think that the words will perfectly match on top of those papers. Yes, and that's my page for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and you are a little bit inspired to create something on your own. To finish it up, I'm adding some white splatters. Um, I think that makes a page look more vibrant and lively. I wish you a wonderful weekend. Bye.